falling in deep And I can't fight it I can't fight it You wreck my mind I'm losing my sleep And you know that it's all that I need What a great so day! Don't leave me What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Bigode EX30. In this box here we have the wheel itself. In here we got some batteries. They're going to go together and we're going to be assembling this and taking this sucker up for a test ride later and uh, showing you what it's all about. So we're going to be joined by some awesome people here on camera to get it done with us. And uh, it's probably empty now, but in a matter of three, two, one. <sighs> all right, cool. We have some awesome folks joining us here. This is Seb, hey. Alex, Brian's back here. Brett on this side, Corey from Ride One, DJ's over here, and the fantastic Shira. We have a lot to go through here today. A whole bunch of stuff needs to be done. So stay tuned and uh, let's get down to this unboxing here today, guys. Obviously, we're gonna start with the big wheel itself. So we're gonna flip this around. I am joined by the fantastic Shira. She's gonna be cutting this open and we're gonna work together as a group here to get this sucker out of the box and everything assembled. So step number one of unboxing, flip the box. These are not necessary effort. Oh my God, it's heavy. Shira, yeah. if you could so kindly, please. Let's get it open here. Sure, this is your portion. Oh, wait a minute, there's, there's a, a box in a box. a box. So now we get cutting the tire is at plus one. <laughs> Just kidding. Points? Banger. Oh, All right, sweet. Ooh, ooh. So we get this done. Ooh. People, people, people. One at a time. Around. All right, oh, I see a tire. So I, I love the help from the whole community here. This is amazing. Oh, careful, careful. 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 oh shit. Let's go. Yeah, this looks really solid, oh, man. I mean, uh, this is the real creme de la creme of, of Bagode, right? In terms of build quality, in terms of what we're expecting for performance, for range, for durability, for suspension. This is uh, the pinnacle of Bagode, and uh, we're super, super excited to have it here. And we're very much looking forward to taking it out for an awesome test ride later too. Battery-wise, 3600 watt hour battery, C40 motor, 4000 watts of power, way too many lumens, lumens for headlight juice, and uh, it can obviously hold big riders like myself. So that's uh, all a whole bunch of pluses here. A lot of talk has been had about these pedals as well, for those that have been wondering. They've lightened them up substantially compared to the original Bagode pedals, 40% less weight. So we'll see how that fares in the long run. Obviously we have some great riders here that are gonna be putting this through its paces and uh, we're gonna see how well it performs. We have a lot to do, uh, including putting the batteries on. We did some homework, obviously, off screen to get things ready. So Seb's gonna get down to this. I also wanna show you guys a couple quick things here. So this is the box that uh, has all the goodies and accessories in it. Um, looking in here, we have uh, the charger, we have two spare fuses and a uh, three amp charger. So for those that are curious, that's what you get inside your box. While Seb is working away here and getting that kickstand off, there's a reason this thing is coming off. Wanna have a conversation about it. I'm gonna ask b to join us here on the, on the camera here. Birai, um, talk us through this kickstand fiasco and what we're trying to accomplish with what Seb's doing. So in the master, uh, the kickstand was kind of part of what adds rigidity to the frame. So we took the kickstand off to see if there's any play in here. Oh, so that's pretty there, there's very little play now. Before the master, this there would be a lot of play. So this is definitely much better now. Is this yeah, it goes right through the shock. Yeah, Look before, the way they mounted, there was tons of play. Okay. Like, you got Seb here, who's a, yeah. a big, strong guy, really reefing on it. And you can <laughs> see that it, it's uh, it's holding its own. So for those that are concerned from a durability perspective and the flex here, um, really have no fear. Because there are some, I guess, sharper features on the actual kickstand here, too, that you may be concerned about. But given our quick little uh, pinch test that we just executed, we should be pretty okay. Let's talk about side pads. So this is something awesome that I think in terms of color, I mean, I hope the lighting is really doing it justice. They are vibrant in my opinion, a really nice blue. The finish is cool. And once they go on the wheel, you guys will see this kind of how it's gonna be with you know engagement to your calf and uh, your shin and whatnot and how it's gonna feel. But tons of space to grab onto here on the side. You can see a fair amount of uh, protrusion from the side of the wheel. And once we get that mounted up to the batteries, um, that'll be good to go. Sure. Yeah, we all agree so the look is black. The know, look is pretty. Lines, yeah. yeah, it is. It, it, adds it the, is a lot of pads. It adds the character to the right? wheel instead of just looking like a wheel. Yeah, for those that can't hear the, the commentary in the back is, I hope you guys are picking up it. Brett's like, it's a lot of pad and it really is a lot of pad. There's a good amount of meat here to execute good acceleration and good deceleration um, 
as you need to do so. The next step of this puzzle is gonna be the batteries. Um, he's just holding 50 kilos like it's no one's business. Alex? 20, All right. 20 kilos, yeah. That's, that sounds a little bit more appetizing. It weighs about the same as the wheel itself. <laughs> Obviously filleted a couple salmon fillets in his life. Look at him go here. Mm -hmm. Juice. Sub, get in here. Come yeah. on in, Sub. You, you boys get in here got? and uh, What do we got? Oh, there's four. Four. four hey, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Okay. Thanks, man. Where's Shira? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Shira, Christmas. I'm Jewish. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, definitely nicer than so Talk me through some of your first impressions. Bubble Alex. wrap. How does it feel? It's very solid. Definitely. Yeah. A lot better than the plastic ones that you get on the master right and uh yeah it's like aluminum it's solid yeah so definitely uh this was a issue with the master where they did not put enough silicone in but here in the ex30 in the battery cases i think there's enough for waterproofing here so it's a little bit more robust it should withstand some more of the elements and the nature of putting it together on the wheel too so uh, shout out to goat for really like alex said you can hear it solid aluminum uh, battery case well put together and uh, a nice solid uh, wire protection too. And these are brand new, never before seen uh, pedals, right? Less material, bigger yeah. holes, it's entirely different. But at a first glance, you may think they're the same as the uh, the cast or the CNC pedals like you've those. seen. They look good. But they're a lot less material. And it's cool how they recess this from the whole point so you can get your Allen key right in. Key down. Instead of going little half yeah, turns. Very quick. That's really cool what Seb just showed. Like yeah. Again, serviceability and simplicity. You can now get your Allen key in a very accessible manner. You're not relying on a small ratcheting action. You have a little bit more accessibility to that yeah. pedal. So again, uh, an, uh, this is an additional machining process to achieve it versus leaving this solid, but it's a step that Bagot's taken to make uh, all of us riders' lives just a little bit easier. They kept all the old features as well. You still have the same nuts that are going through here and through here, but that accessibility is a lot better, right? Yeah, like it's so much thinner. A different so caliber for sure. Yeah, like, and like we have, we trust those pedals, those big gold, like original CNC pedals that they've used for a long time. We all love them. Right. So now we're very curious to see if these are going to hold up as well, which they probably, you know, they should. Scalpel? Yeah, maybe. Well, that's a good thing if they sell cone the whole thing. That or a good uh, O-ring or something. There you go. Okay, so yeah, th there is oh, some, right. some silicone here. Is it an O-ring or a silicone? Or an O-ring, yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah, but O-ring's busted on this side. Okay, yeah, going around the screws, that yeah. looks like a manufactured oh, so did the screws go through it? May, yeah. it? It might have nicked it on the way through, perhaps. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you can see just the channel of this. You can almost, almost see the deformation of where the screw hole is yeah. as it maybe bulged out. So I don't know if these holes were tapped correctly or what it is or what torque they used to drive them in, maybe. But it caused something here to nick right where the screw holes are. It could have been a lack of grease when they installed yeah. it. You put a little yeah. dab of grease. The good thing is that they have this. Yeah, this looks pretty sealed, actually. I believe this was that casing that they were showing in that video where they were, th the battery itself Can is wrapped. Can you see the cells exactly? No, I, no we'd have to okay. take it. Like yeah, out and... but this is a nice plastic case. Yeah, this, right is, this is a good plastic case. So in the process of putting batteries on, we want to take a bit of a pit stop and have a conversation about the motor bearing. So this is a C40 motor, and I got DJ here with me to have a chat about it and you know point out some observations. Okay, thanks, Sam. I'm just gonna go right into this. There's that white grease right there that you can see poking out. There's no actual gap in between the axle and the motor, they actually they made a cover for the bearing, which is surprising how well it's made. Another thing just to point out, you might notice the wire is right on the edge right there. I mean, they have the brackets for holding the wire, but it's still something to think about uh, for future wheels. Uh, but I'm just so glad that they actually made something and considered the waterproofing on the bearing itself. Even on the V13 and the, S, uh, the Sherman S, uh, it's not as tight as that and it still has good clearance. The motor itself, apparently, we haven't looked at this personally, but from what I've understood is that the rim is bigger and wider than any wheel out there right now, honestly. Like, apparently, you can't get your hand around this. Uh, and uh, finding out that it's true. It's amazing how thick this motor is. Spoke count is what we're, we're talking about here. And definitely like, um, I don't have a count on it right 12. now. We could, 12? 12. 12. 12 spoke, man's a wizard with the yeah, numbers. Yeah, the width of the rim is gonna be good for the tire as well. It's gonna allow it to be more rounded instead of having that balloon effect from a thinner rim. Right. So when you're in the corners, you're gonna be able to utilize the whole profile of the tire instead of having being riding on such a smaller surface. So I think that's something that I'm really interested in seeing. Cause I know this tire well, but I've ridden it on everything. So I'll be able to tell right away how that 
is different. Even though it's only like a quarter inch or maybe three eighths of an inch difference, I think it's gonna make a big difference. Before we go ahead and uh, pop the can here in the hood and connect these batteries up, uh, b is here with me as well. We're gonna go ahead and check battery voltage just to see consistency across the board and how well things are matched before we go ahead and plug it all in. So I'll be the multimeter holder and we got b here to walk us through it and uh, I'll read off the voltages as we go through it here. So let's see where we're at. First pack, 60 volts on the dot. So the second one, 60 volts on the dot. Yes, yeah, so we got another 60 volt here. That's awesome. And the last one there, B-Rai, that's great. And yeah, we talked about that. That's critical, right? You have some uh, extra life support in previously, case things go wrong. Previously, Big O ran a four series for the packs on the master, which is why people were concerned because in case one pack goes bad, then you get dropped. But in this case, uh, one pack goes bad, You the other two packs should still run the wheel. Seb's gonna go ahead now and uh, crack open the lid here. Ooh, I see. We got little O-rings for our charge ports there. We'll make sure those don't go out of place. Let's see those? Yeah, see these little guys? Because this is a really, like, this is the number one spot water will get in on this wheel, I find. When you have your charge door open and you're charging outside if it's raining or whatever. So this is the moment of truth here for everybody. We're gonna go ahead and uh, plug it in and uh, see where it goes. Seb's gonna get the mic for the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so mostly, uh, these are kind of cheap and just thrown out and cut out, but they put metal, they, sorry, metal, <laughs> they put metal washers in here. Look at that, guys. No. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a that's a oh, metal did, oh there's a the there's an insert there's an insert the in there. That's part of the mold. That. The that's master cool. you 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 would tiny it with the yeah. foam. It'll still rip off. So I mean, for yeah, those that are curious, it, it helps every little yeah, 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 yeah. from a manufacturing perspective, this nice is called thing. over molding. So what they've done is they've taken an insert in the injection mold, placed it, and they shoot the material around that. So it's encased and fully encapsulated. So you don't it's not even an afterthought with a washer. It's yeah. it's baked into the part. You're not squishing the plastic or the foam that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. Where's the foam? So Seb's done the job of christening the power connection inside the wheel. And naturally, he must uh, hit the power button here right. to get it going. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, the beep! Hey, oh, is. look at that. Cool. One, how does it have one kilometer on it? <laughs> That's right. Seb, how does so, it feel? Initial. Feels cool. I mean, we got to put some air in it still. Yes, we do have to pump up the uh, the shock as well. It doesn't have right now that bigode. You know that, that whining. Whine. The bigode whine when you yeah. know you left your wheel on because something's cool. humming. <laughs> it's the quietest one ever. <laughs> um, it wasn't what I was expecting from a, from a peel perspective. But go with minus uh, minus two points for poly tape peel. How heavy is it? You, get get that, that. Uh, you know what? You can get this in your car. You can get it up a couple set, uh, sets of stairs. But if you're doing two flights, you might have a you might just want to push it up. So Ooh, the pump's got a quick little disconnect here. So as you're unscrewing it from the valve stem or the connection to the shock, you're not going to lose. 10 PSI, which means another 10 1 8 inch strokes to make up that difference. Yeah. So they're going to be putting on the side pads um, and they're working on taking the pedals off to do so. Um, you can't fish the side pad around the bottom pedal without tearing it or applying excessive uh, force that you shouldn't be. We've only got one shot, so let's get this right and take it right up against it. Yeah, and I think tuck it up as far up as you guys can go, I presume. Yep. So yep. sit on the back. Here's got it. Even down to like some screws on the other side, on the underside here, they're cut out of the pad. I mean, that's the beauty folks of like injection molded side pads. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna get something that is, you know, to tolerance, it's uh, it's in the right place. So for those that are interested, there is an awesome opportunity to get the miniature version of this wheel. Uh, you can go to miniwheel.ca. Um, there's miniature versions of this along with a couple of other great Bigode slash Gotway wheels, which uh, might be of interest to you. So check it out, miniwheel.ca. Batteries, shock is pumped, things are connected. We've had a conversation about so many cool things here but what really matters is what happens on the pavement so we're gonna get the sucker charged up we're gonna get outside capture some great footage of it of course riding and stationary and uh, we're gonna catch you guys here very very soon so do me a huge favor don't go too far back to you here very very soon from a place of hardship to a place of ease a place of flourish in return it's for a reason that I couldn't say yet yeah. I don't find time to debate if I deserve growth or if maybe I should preserve coping by hating you 
everybody watching this is our preliminary oh my pedal oh, our preliminary test ride on the real city streets in the greater toronto area i'm on ex30 by big goad and it's a big moment for all of us this community has been really excited about getting this wheel we finally got it thanks to mini wheel big shout out to those guys because they without them this would be in our hands right now. So I got my crew behind me. We're all just gonna go out onto the street and go for a nice little drive. And I'll give you my first thoughts on how this thing handles, how it accelerates, how it brakes. It feels amazing so far. We got a completely stock figuration right now with about 220 pounds in the rear shock. And we're running 37 PSI. And it feels nice. It's got the factory Chencheng tire, which is a tire I'm very, very familiar with. First of all, the braking is good, a little too good. One thing that I'll notice right away, the seated position on this wheel is incredible. I've got mastered Abrams and a lot of the other taller wheels, and this thing is just perfect. My knees don't feel like they're in my chest. The height is nice. A lot of power. Wow, there's a lot of power. <laughs> and it can stop pretty quick too. Seated accelerating is actually really easy on this wheel. That little dovetail or the little ducktail that they got at the back of the of the butt area where you sit, I think that's pretty helpful. I feel that when I'm sitting on it. My initial thoughts on the suspension. Ooh, we got a lot of air in it right now, but it's pretty good. I have Master. It feels a little bit better than Master, maybe. We got the whole posse behind us here. <laughs> this neighborhood definitely hasn't seen something like this before. This thing is so stable. Now I've ridden everything on the market except for, no, I've ridden everything. And right now, for a 20 inch wheel, I think this feels pretty damn solid. I think it's mostly because of the weight. The weight of the packs really make this thing feel pleasant. I've always preferred heavier wheels too. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. It's definitely very nimble. Don't forget the Kinetic DLs. Oh, yeah. These shoes are pretty awesome for this. I'm glad I'm wearing them today. Oh, we picked the perfect day for this. This thing is so stable at this speed, I love it. So far, I don't have a damn complaint about it. <laughs> oh wow, this is fast, man, holy shit. The torque on this thing is just wild. Oh man. <laughs> Whoa. It's very responsive to rider feedback. Like anything you put into it, it gives you. 
Oh, this thing's incredible. <laughs> I love these stupid things. Those boys blew a red light. It's too, too stable for its own good. Like, it feels like it's standing up on its own. It's got just so much weight to it. It's kind of like that big boy feel. You got to get used to it, you know? But it's, uh... It's got a lot of weight side to side to the point where it, like it doesn't want to fall over right away. It kind of feels big, but then again, it kind of doesn't feel big. Let's see if I can get it up off the air. Kind of, not really. <laughs> Give her a good shot though. Whoa! Gotta get those feet nice and stable on it because it's such a big wheel. Gotta be able to be nice and firm on that grip before you really torque it. It wants to act like a high torque wheel, and I want it to act like a high torque wheel, but it's such a big boy. But honestly, side to side, like when you want to throw it side to side, oh, it's just so stable. Like it doesn't like fall over right away. Like the V13 just like falls over instantly, where this is like, okay, you're gonna fall over now. Just kind of like lets you have that fun holding its center really nicely so it's a really nice wheel to ride and it gives you that feeling like it's a smaller wheel but really it's 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 a big wheel so yeah oh my lanta it just feels so good at speed you know you don't expect it then it happens and you're like oh I want that I want that big time such a good feeling really really do like this wheel there's other wheels that kind of make you feel less passionate but this one really does make you feel passionate truly truly big time oh yeah it feels so good at speed it truly does like as soon as you get up to speed like just holds its own ground and come to speak of it I haven't really heard a beep I haven't really heard many beeps at all. You know, like, I feel like I could truly mess with this thing, really. Get her going that, oh, that seat. Oh, that seat. Oh, it feels so good. Like, it's just so fat. It's so wide. There's just something really nice about that. I am a seated rider, I really like that. Although the seat is kind of like slick. It's very slick but it's wide. This thing is so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Oh boy. Yeah, at least. Um, I'm used to the Sherman and also the puddles are huge. So I feel like that's good to have that extra space, especially as I have small feet, so it works. Um, I'm not a fan of the pad. I feel like they don't lock me in enough, but I learned that the hard way earlier. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good wheel. I feel like if I had it for about a week or so, I would get used to it, get used to that nimbleness of it, because it does feel better than the V13. Um, not as quite as familiar as the Sherman S, but definitely it's a different beast, to put it lightly. Hi, puppy. Um, seated on it, though, feels absolutely great. Um, but yeah, definitely would like more of a locked in feeling. Yeah, but even trying to carve on it, definitely don't feel like I have that stability just yet. But it's getting there. Feels very stable though, like everyone else was saying, that it just wants to stay upright. I can feel that for sure. Giving it a little bit more speed. Yeah, my calves can definitely feel the difference between this and the Sherman. Starting to get a little bit more comfortable on it. I'm still hesitant. Yeah. <laughs> I carry, I carry, I carry. That's why I concentrate riding. It's a ride. Let's do it. Let's try to find another road. Let's try to find something that's more open. Come on, let's find an 80 road. Yeah, 
I can see why Shara said though, these spots are loose. Their toe's completely open here. going. How fast? 70? Okay, I'm getting beast to 70 then. Three bars, three bars off five. That was fun. All right, everybody, welcome back to the, uh, the studio. Of course, we have had a very, very busy day riding. A bunch of people had the chance to test ride. I hope you guys enjoyed the footage and everything else that uh, culminated up to this event here. So the most important thing with uh, this, obviously, video as a whole is to get some feedback from the riders, right? I'm gonna start by going around the room and introducing some of the riders that you've seen uh, riding earlier, and then also get them to uh, drop some opinions and we'll just have a conversation about it. So first person coming up is the fantastic Seb. All right, EX30, it's an incredible wheel. Um, being a master owner, and I have the 50E version, so I'm used to these batteries. Um, this is a lot more comforting for me to ride knowing I can do 80 or even tap into the 90s, which I haven't done yet. But having that reserve of the 3600 watt hour instead of a 2000 or 2400 watt hour pack gives me a lot of confidence. It's super stable. I really enjoy the pedal to the seat height. Master's probably around here. This wheel's got a little bit more height. The duckbill seat, I found so comfortable. Um, the power delivery was insane. I've never, like standing on the wheel, you can crank on it and it'll just do whatever you want to. We did have a little issue with pads. I mean, everybody knows when you buy these Bagode wheels, you're buying like a, a base model of what you're gonna do to modify. You're gonna put your own pads. You might, actually these pedals, we probably won't want to change because they're pretty incredible. We had a little issue with pads coming off. We had to refix. Um, other than that, all around, I was thoroughly impressed and I uh, would definitely consider buying one. Awesome. Next person coming up is going to be, let's start with Shira. Shira, you want to come on up and give us your opinions? So again, this is this is talking about some of the important parts about how it fits different body styles, body types, and uh, riding styles as well. So. All right. Um, so I am a smaller individual and I find that the seat was a bit wide for my legs. Um, I had to kind of have adapt to a wide stance. But honestly, I feel like once I get used to it, it'll be more easy to work with. Um, I also found the pads that were stock, not my cup of tea. Um, I personally like to have more of a locked in feeling. Um, this didn't really give me that. And there's a bit of an accident that happened where I fell off the wheel, um, but I'm not gonna get into that. Um, but anyways, the pedals are wonderful. Um, the wheel overall, it's a bit weighty. So it's something that you have to get used to. Um, but coming from a Sherman to this, wasn't that hard in comparison to what I thought it was going to be. Um, it didn't really feel as top heavy as per se like uh, the V13. I found the V13 was a bit harder for me to ride, a bit taller, so a bit more uncomfortable. But again, I feel like time will tell with these kind of things. But overall, definitely, it's a very good wheel. It has good speed and really good acceleration and definitely would like to ride it more. Uh, proceeding further down the list, we have the also fantastic E-Rider A, Mr. Brett, come on down. Now this wheel, like it, it's a big wheel, like it's a big, we call it a big boy wheel. But the one thing I felt about this is that like it truly didn't so much feel that way. Like it's big, it's girthy, it's got some choke. I feel like I could toss this wheel around, like you could see it in the video maybe where I was riding it. And it, it, it is a big wheel and it feels like a big wheel, but you can almost make this feel like a smaller wheel under your feet. Like I'm used to an RS, I'm used to a Monster Pro, these Bagode products, but 
this one they they kind of they were listening i feel and they and they they nailed a couple parts on it which is really exciting really fun of course with any bagode wheel you're gonna find some snaggy things that you don't so much like and you have to customize it the way you enjoy it like the pads and whatnot but overall riding this wheel it was just too comfortable for me to like for me to say anything bad about it i was i was very very much liking my ride on it and it would take me maybe a week or two to find maybe one or two things i would change about it but overall from my first impression of a wheel like you have so many wheels where you're like maybe this isn't good maybe that isn't good where this is like okay that's good okay that's good but i didn't even realize i was up and over 80 kilometers an hour i was like whoa that seat i'm a seated rider i really love seating seated riding and uh it's it's that it's a really wide like Shira may have mentioned in hers like it's wide so for someone who's got that bit of a base like riding it was definitely a pleasure and i would love to do it again and again and maybe again yeah all right so going further down the list let's get the uh, the oso maestro b ride up in here i'm gonna lapel you up sir yeah whoever gets this wheel uh you're gonna have a lot of fun <laughs> i had a lot of fun with this wheel uh i i've ridden a lot of wheels i my favorite wheel still is Sherman, but I, I own Sherman, I own Master, I own Monster Pro, a T4, M104, S22. This is one of the most fun I had with the wheel on at first sight. This wheel handles very well. It, it's a wide wheel, it's a heavy wheel, but it, it handles very nimbly because of the low center of gravity. I'm not sure if the pedal height is, is taller than the Master or not, but it feels lower. And it definitely carves well. I mean, you're, you're gonna see a footage should be carving this. It carves well. Uh, normally, I hate I hate the Bigodi knobby tires. Uh, the CST 186 is trash, but this knobby tire feels good. That being said, I, I still need to try this uh, tire on a fast corner, like because the CST 186 it kind of throws you off on the side. So I gotta see how this tire feels like uh, doing a fast cornering. But on, on a regular carving, it feels amazing. Some things I don't like about this, uh, the pedals, I feel that the spikes are a little bit too too far apart. Uh, also, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like there's no spikes, like, like we're missing like half the spikes here. Looks like we're missing half the spikes on the inside. Mm -hmm. And also, they're further apart than other spiked pedals, so that yeah. that's something for consideration. Yeah, build quality is definitely improved from previous Bogod uh, wheels. Uh, I think I would change out the pedals. I mean, I, I know a lot of people said they enjoy the pedals, but I think I think we can do better in the pedals. Overall though, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun in this wheel. Awesome, let's keep going down the pipeline. Uh, two more impressions, let's get DJ up here. All right, so I've got a lot to say about this wheel, but I'll keep it short and I'll start with the bad stuff. Honestly, we'll start from top to bottom. Things you might know is the 100 digit doesn't actually work, uh, why? Would you make that and then not finish your job? Uh, so yeah, you'll get up to 99 and then it'll stay at zero. You'll start going into the ones, into the tens until you cut off. Uh, moving downwards, the seat is amazing. I know I, we said we we're gonna do bad stuff, but they put washers in the screw mounts, right? So usually you just tape this on, just like the pads are just taped on. But you could, uh, with the pad, with the same thing with the seat, you could do with the pads where you have a washer in there and you screw these on, they never come off. Uh, moving down, they have these roll bars that are amazing to lift and to hold and manage the wheel, maneuver the wheel. But still kind of weird to lift this from such a high point. I always recommend grabbing the pedals and lifting from there if you're putting it in your car or something. Moving downwards into the light, amazing light. For some reason, they finally got focused lights. But right behind the light, you'll notice is your beeper, which is a good spot, but it's loose. It's open, it's like just flopping there at the bottom. There's no actual mounting for it. So it's just held on barely. Uh, and typical Bigode, all their screws stick out onto the inside of the chassis, of course. Uh, it's not that big of a deal and this mudguard is steel so if you bend that uh, you might want to keep an eye on that it might rub your tire all stuff like that you know typical quality but it's amazing to have these nice cast metal or I'm not sure if they're cast but they are steel they're cast uh, at the bottom there you'll notice that these brackets hold the battery packs to the chassis these brackets uh, kind of don't make sense to me they extend a little far and then all the way in the back, the kickstand extends even past the bracket and just kind of drags. You'll see some videos of people riding this downstairs. I don't recommend it because you start dragging the kickstand and scratching up the entire chassis, especially if you have a low pressure 
low tire pressure, low pump uh, shock pressure. So always keep that in mind. I think these cast pe these pedals, are they cast? They're cast, They're cast They're pedals. Well, no, the, the CNC is actually just the, the, the rim that's shiny, but they, they're, they're cast pedals. But they're also missing some points that spikes should be. Like on most of their pedals, I think they have spikes right in the center. And my foot keeps sliding off right off the, the side of this pedal. Uh, it's not fun, especially when you're taking a turn. But to finish off this tire, if you look, the rim lines up with the tire. Show me another wheel that does that because this rim is the widest thing I've ever seen and it's amazing, especially in turns. Because as he said, this tire, not so good, but this combination is working really well. Man, I like this wheel. As much as it has weird problems with it, you know, it's bigode and their performance is amazing. All right, last man standing. Mr. Alex, let me uh, clip you up here, sir. Uh, I'm not a bigode owner, um, so this will be no surprise to all the bigode people. Truly a performance wheel. First thing I got on it, just like the speed and power, it just keeps on delivering. Um, I had the V13 for about a week prior to trying this. And V13, you know, it took a little bit of time to get into it, to learn it. But this one, it kind of just gives you everything from the moment you step on. Had a chance to take it on the road, have like less than 10 kilometers on it, but I got a pretty good impression on the power. So overall, yeah, I like it. Uh, this like, well, I guess, um, you know, smart BMS and all the new, uh, newer wheels are coming out with it. So hopefully Bogo can do that for their future wheels. But yeah, overall, decent wheel. We'll leave it at that. So that's a summary of the video for everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and for joining us for this adventure that we've been on, right from unboxing to assembly to the amazing group of people here that uh, join us to ride it. A big thank you to the uh, EUC PEV community for continuing to push the hobby forward and keeping it real. The fantastic folks around the room. It's been a long day, so if you see some tired faces, um, yeah. you'll understand why. And let's thank Mini Wheels for making yeah. this happen. Yeah. Amazing stuff. So with that, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna add much more to it. There's a lot more to come with this guy. So uh, be sure to stay tuned and we hope to create more content for y'all. We'll be here to take you along for that journey. So until then, catch you guys next time.